Amos 7? 10. Here we go. When you have it, all of that was for you to get it. Now, when you have it, say amen. How many people bought your real Bible to church? I want to do something special for all the real Bible. I'm just feeling my heart. I'm supposed to do something for you. Lunch is on me today. Would you go to Chick-fil-A? Tell them I sent you. Get a number one in Jesus' name. Y'all ready? Let's do it together. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent a message to Jeroboam, king of Israel. Amos is raising a conspiracy against you in the very heart of Israel. The land cannot bear all his words. For this is what Amos is saying. Jeroboam will die by the sword. Israel will surely go into exile away from their native land. Then Amaziah said to Amos, get out, you seer, you prophet. Of the he said, man, you need to get out of here. Go back to the land of Judah down south. Earn your bread there and do your prophesying there. Don't prophesy anymore at Bethel because this is the king's sanctuary in the temple of the kingdom. Watch this. Amos answered Amaziah. I like this. He said, I was neither a prophet nor the son of a prophet, but I was a shepherd. He said, and I also took care of sycamore fig trees. But the Lord took me from tending the flock and said to me, go prophesy to my people Israel. Now then, hear the word of the Lord. You say, do not prophesy against Israel and stop preaching against the descendants of, Is of Isaac. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. This is what God got to say to you, Amaziah. He told me to tell you, your wife... You ain't never read this before. This is the stories you haven't heard. Since you got so much to say, your wife gonna be in them streets, dog. <laughs> and your sons and daughters will fall by the sword. Your land will be measured and divided up. And you yourself will die in a pagan country. And Israel will surely go into exile away from their native land. My God. Four penalties. He said, your wife going to be in the streets. Your kids going to get killed. Your land going to get divided. And you going to die in a godless land. But what I really want to bring emphasis today is on verse 14 and 15. I've never preached from the book of Amos in all my life. And I'm excited. I've been preaching for 22 years. But I'm excited about this word. Amos answered Amaziah I was neither a prophet nor the son of a prophet I was just a shepherd I took care of the sycamore fig tree but the Lord took me but I like that the Bible got big butts and it cannot lie but that's a big one the Lord took me. I like that. He took me from tending the flock and said to me, go prophesy to my people Israel. I got a word from God today. The title is, I never asked for this. Would you do me a favor and touch three people and tell them, I never asked for this. I didn't ask for this. I didn't. The Lord took me. The Lord took me from that to this. The Lord took me from comfort to calling. The Lord took me from making excuses to being an example. The Lord took, the Lord raised me up. The Lord called my name. The Lord took me from that to this. Lord Jesus, breathe on your word. We give you credit for it in that man. Jesus name. Amen. You can take your seats. I never asked for this. I, I could really go home right there. 
I never asked for this. Your only response to Amaziah the accuser is, I never asked for this. Well, you don't have enough resources. I never asked for this. And since God called me, according to Philippians, God will supply all of my needs according to his riches. And you're not experienced enough. My only response is, I never asked for this. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1.27, get to know this verse. He says, but God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. Man, I'm weak. That's why God chose you. I didn't ask for this. And that didn't get you to shout. So let me read it from the message translation. Look at what this author said, these verses say. Verse 26 to 31. Take a good look, friends, at who you were when you got called into this life. I don't see many of the brightest and the best among you. God, dog, Paul. Not many influential, not many from high society families. He's like, isn't it obvious that God deliberately chose men and women that the culture overlooks? That the culture exploits, that the culture abuses, chose these nobodies to expose the hollow pretensions of the somebodies. Verse 29. That makes it quite clear, ladies and gentlemen, that none of you can get by with blowing your own horn before God. He said, everything that we have, watch the Bible, right thinking and right living, a clean slate. I like this for the religious people. Everything you got, right living, right thinking, a clean slate, a fresh start, comes by way, comes from God by way of Jesus. Watch the Bible. That's why we have this saying. If you're going to blow a horn, blow a trumpet for God. This verse is so humbling because it tells me that everything I got, it's from God. He said, if you're going to boast, boast on God. If you're going to brag, brag about God. He said, if you're going to blow a horn, you need to be blowing a trumpet for God. And this is why the Bible says in Isaiah, he says, lift your voice like a trumpet. Cry out, spare not. Are there any trumpet blowers in the room today that know that the only reason you're breathing in your right mind or even wanting to halfway live for God is because of his grace and not by your own works. If I was you, I would clap my hands and thank God that he didn't leave me where he felt me. Me. I make my boast in the Lord. I make my boast in the Lord. This is the season that I believe the Lord wants to deliver you from false humility. I'm not boasting in me. I'm boasting in him. Ooh, tell your neighbor, boast on him. Brag on him. I was, uh, when, I, when I was praying and thinking through this message, my mom went back to a story that I hadn't thought about in years. And the only person in this room that even knows this story is my wife. There was a pastor, a, known, a well-known pastor. He, he got upset with me when I told him we were moving to Columbia because he wanted to hire me. He wanted to hire me. And here's the funny thing. I actually needed the money and the stability. Just had a newborn baby. We trying to figure things out. You know, my wife liked to say I was Travis. I want Travis Green. There's a difference. And, uh, so I want a whole lot popping. It was just, you know. And so he wanted to hire me, and we prayed about it. My wife was like, nah, I, like, I think you just need to follow God. And I was like, yo, I'm going to have to follow God. He's telling me to move to Columbia. We broke, but he's telling me to move to Columbia and start a church. This pastor looked at me, and what he didn't know is that he was giving word curses. <laughs> and I don't know if it's because he was upset, whatever. His name is, I'm kidding. He, uh, <laughs> he said, he said, he said, all right, go on down there then. He said, he said, only about 300 people going to show up. He said, you don't know enough. Y'all going to struggle financially. This is what he told me. This is what he told me. He said, he said, the only way they're going to come and stay, you're going to have to get up there every week with your guitar. And the funny thing is, he could have been right. Hey, Siri, call Travis Green. He could have been right. Please enter your password, then press pound. Wait a minute. <laughs> Call Travis Green. Please enter your password, then press pound. Call. Please enter your password, then press pound. 
I can't call myself. He could have been right if I called myself, but the truth of the matter is, I never asked for this. God called you. God picked you. God selected you. I need you to grab your neighbor and tell him, I never asked for this. I never asked for this anointing. I never asked for this gift. I never asked for this grace. Travis didn't call Travis. God called Travis. You got 30 seconds. Lift your hands and give him a praise like you know God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think according to his riches and glory according to his own power his own ability and the power that he allowed to work in you God called me I never asked for this I never asked for this he could have been right if I called me but you can't call yourself Let me calm down. I came to preach to two different audiences. The first audience I came to preach to is those who forgot. Those who forgot that you ain't the one who called you. I came to encourage your soul today. I came to remind you that if God called you, he will cover you. If God caught you, he will carry you. So why, why, I asked the book questions. Why would God call Amos? It's a very deep answer. You ready? Because he wanted to. <laughs> Don't you love that? God called you because he wanted to. Gideon, the weakest in his family, God called him. Moses, a stuttering fugitive. God called him. David, David was unworthy to be invited to his own family reunion. The most important day in his daddy's life. And his dad forgot about him, but God didn't. God called him. Joseph was hated by his own blood, the Bible said. They hated him, they hated him, but every time they pushed him, please hear what I'm telling you. They were pushing him closer to destiny. They pushed him out of his homeland. This is the word of God. They pushed him out of Potiphar's house. They pushed him into a dungeon. But the people weren't rejecting Joseph. The season was rejecting Joseph. I'm let that marinate like some of your chitlins at home. Quit eating that. What if you weren't being rejected by people. You were being rejected by the season. Because sometimes God's pull feels like man's push. I got to find me a church to preach at. That's why. You've been saying, they keep rejecting me. What if they actually, not your enemy, but your escort? And so, and so, Amos, the Bible says, is minding his business. He tending his sheep, but God was watching him. You're just working your nine to five, but God's watching. That's why you got to be faithful over the little. Amos never knew what was in his future. He was just being faithful to his present. Woo. And when you get overqualified for you today, tomorrow will pull you into it. Some of us are frustrated by where we are, but we don't know that we haven't been faithful enough for our future to become a magnet. Can I tell you something? I've never had to kick down a door in my life. I just get overqualified for where I'm at, and the next season pulls me in. I came to preach to somebody and let you know woo, that the future is waiting on you. You're not waiting on it. God called Amos. He never asked for it. Amos wasn't even qualified. But God don't call to qualify. God qualifies those he called. And I love this because this word is for those who forgot you didn't call yourself. But I didn't just come to preach to you. I came to preach to another audience. I came to preach to every Amaziah spirit. This is a reminder 
to every demon assigned to intimidate you. This is a reminder to every principality that's been trying to push you out of the place you call to. This is a reminder to every spirit of accusation that tries to remind and bring up your past. I never asked for this. This is your warning. Because I didn't make the decision, I don't have to defend it. I wish you'd just grab your neighbor and tell them I never asked for it. Because heaven called me, hear me, heaven will back me. Travis, how do you know? Because the Bible says, touch not my anointed. Do my prophet. I wish you'd just look at somebody and say, I don't really know what you've been saying, but watch your mouth. Watch your mouth, dog. Watch, just, just, be, just be really, really careful. The Bible says in Isaiah 45, I mean uh, 54, 54, 17. It says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I like this. And every tongue, not only will the weapon not prosper, <laughs> but the naysayers won't prosper. Every tongue shall be condemned that rise against. Can we go deeper? I came to preach. I just, thank you, LaWanda. I just need 10 people to push me. Can we go deeper? I love the Bible because Amaziah condemned himself. The accuser condemned himself. He said, he said, get out, you prophet. <laughs> so much happened in this text that's so good that I hope you didn't miss. Amos, first of all, Amos got so much swag. He said, I was neither the prophet nor the son of a prophet. Amos rejects the title. He knows that his anointing and his authority came from Jesus. He knows that he was God's choice. He knows that he didn't ask for it. This is very important, ladies and gentlemen. Write this down if you're a note taker. Either you hold titles loosely or you'll be held by them tightly. Preach Travis Green in this church. Oh yeah, I came to rub every religious bone you got in your body. Call me by my first name, prophetess. That's cool. That's cool. I ain't knocking your title. I'm just saying, if your title's your identity, you'll do anything to keep it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. If whatever goes before your first name is what you find your identity to, trust me, you'll do whatever it takes to hold on to it because you're attached to it. Amos wasn't held by the title. Work the text, Travis. I'm coming, I'm coming. Amos wasn't held by the title. Amaziah was. And because he was held by his title, he tried to cast out on Amos. Watch the Bible. It said Amaziah, the priest of Bethel. Get out of here, you prophet. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If I attach myself to that, then I'm going to care about the title more than I do the calling. And if you look at the text, Amaziah was playing political games. When he was speaking to Jeroboam, he was speaking to the king. He said, hey, king, he in your territory. He's scaring the people. They can't handle this kind of work. You got to look at it. Amaziah wanted the king's favor, not the favor of the king of kings. He is more devoted to being politically correct than being spiritually correct. And you will do the same thing if your identity is tied to your title. How do you know that, Travis? Because it's 2024, and there's so many pastors who are so attached to their title, they're more concerned about getting canceled than doing what they called to do. I don't even need no help right here. I'm going to preach it anyway. We're afraid to stand against stuff that God stands against. Can I tell you something? Let me free you. PT is not my name. That's my nickname. My name is Travis. And when I stand before God, he's going to say Travis, not Pastor Travis, not Bishop Travis, not Apostle Travis, not Prophet Travis. He's going to say, Tra he might even call me Trav. He's going to say, Trav, did you do what I told you to do? Or were you more interested in growing a church than reminding a generation that a godly marriage is only between a man and a woman? 
Oh, I'm coming. Because I didn't ask for this. Trust me, if my wife picked the city, it wouldn't be Columbia. I didn't ask for this. So I'm going to do what he called me to do. Travis, are you more interested in maintaining some Instagram followers or reminding a generation that the devil can't give life and so ain't no man to be able to choose whether to keep it or not? Say, I already lost the church. And let me, let me help you. Let me help you. This is not me leaning to the left or the right. We're not called to lean. We're called to stand. Stand on the word of God. Stand on his truth. Stand on his love. Stand on his grace. And we got so many weak people. Because we're trying to impress the king of culture. We're trying to impress the king of our friend group. Well, I just want to fit in and ooh, people going to get offended or ooh, people going to make comments. If you didn't ask for it, and Messiah not coming against you, he's coming against God. I wish I had 20 people that felt like God was threatening your back to remember that you didn't call yourself, but you do have a responsibility with the call God gave you. And now, here's Amaziah. Let me show you the danger. Amaziah, because he's playing political games and using the Lord's name to do it, because he's calling himself a priest, his punishment was simply the harvest of his seed. Watch the Bible. Watch the Bible. Since he was prostituting his gifts, now his wife will be a prostitute. Watch the Bible. Since he was trying to cut off God's word, God cut off his children. Since he was trying to push the prophet out of the land, he got pushed himself out of the land. The devil would steal his wife, kill his children, destroy his land. Steal, kill, destroy. It was the harvest of his seed of corruption and deception. You got to be really careful what kingdom you give your allegiance to. Because the Bible says, if you're ashamed of me down there, come on, I came to raise up a generation that says, for God I'll live, for God I'll die. I'm not trying to be offensive. I love everybody. God loves everybody, but his truth is his truth. His word is his word. And listen, we don't bring God's word down to fit our culture. We bring our lifestyle up to fit his word. His word was here before you or your grandmama got here. The Bible says heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will last forever. I don't need everybody. Give me 50 people and a 13-year-old that know that the truth of God still remains. I never asked for this. 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 I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel, I'm telling you, I feel something shifting in this room. I feel God breaking our hearts for what breaks his and bringing us back to repentance. And remembering that it's for God I live and God I die. I'm not called to fit in. I'm not called just to, just to be liked by you. I'm on assignment. I wish you would tell somebody I'm on assignment. And I can do it with a smile. I don't have to be nasty and loud. I can say, nah, baby, God ain't in that. I can say, oh, man, I'm going to have to rebuke that. And I'll tip you good. <laughs> so we're in our text. And this is a random shepherd. I like what the Bible says about Elijah. He said he was a regular man just like us. Amos is a, just a random shepherd. Ain't even a, a luxurious job. I mean, I kind of wish he was like a superintendent or like a supervisor. The dude is out playing with sheep. Stay. You ain't been around animals in a long time. Go to Riverbank Zoo. <laughs> I asked my middle child. My middle child is the bougiest of the three. I said, you like the zoo? He said, it stank up in there. I said, man, that's your problem. You need some nature in your life. It stank outside. Mm -mm -mm. 
give me this Xbox and some Cheetos and we're going to be all right. <laughs> Amy said, stink. Outside with some sheep. And he says, God took me. Gave me an assignment, gave me a call, gave me an anointing that I didn't ask for. He was minding his business and God found him. You want to know why? Because God wanted to. You want to know why else? Here we go. This is the text. Because Israel's injustice had made God so uncomfortable that he decided to disturb Amos' comfort. What if the discomfort you feel in your life is only a reflection of the discomfort God feels in heaven about that situation? <laughs> so God will give you, watch the text, a holy burden. He'll give you a holy burden, and the only way you can find relief is not through marijuana. I know you got glaucoma. I'm just trying to help you. <laughs> the only way you'll find relief is not through entertainment. All of those things are only momentary relief. The substitutes. The only way you can find relief for a holy burden, I feel like preaching, is by obedience. The weight ain't going nowhere. He waiting for you to obey. Here we go. Here we go. I'm about to take a turn. You've been saying, God, I want a mantle. You want to know what a mantle feels like? A mantle feels like a burden. A mantle feels like weight. So if you're, if you're comfortable in chaos, you may not have a mantle for order. If you're comfortable in mediocrity, you may not have a mantle for excellence. If you're unbothered by something, you're probably uncalled in that area. Note takers, aggravation is a clue to your anointing. I'm taking this show on the road, man. Y'all so on, y'all just... If you're annoyed by it, you're probably annoying it for it. Here we go. 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 Let's grow up. Let's grow up. Let's grow up. When you're anointed for it, you don't just sit back and complain about it. It's a lot of dumb sucking Christians. I'm so sick of culture. That was me. That was me. That was me. I was so annoyed by gospel music. I said, it all sounds alike. It's boring. It's rain. Oh my God, I hate it. Then I got annoyed by church. And I'm like, church is tight. No, I, don't, I don't like going to church. Me and my wife, we're like, we're sick of church. That's true. True story. God said, hey, Travis, the reason you're bothered by it, the burden is your mantle. Shut up and do something about it. This word is for everybody who's been complaining. Shut up and do something about it. You offended, I don't care. I'm sick of the job. Shut up and do something about it. I'm sick of the government. Shut up and do something about it. I'm sick of the school system. Shut your mouth and do something about it. And so, so, if it's hard for you to tolerate and to remain silent about something, Amos, You've been selected to cross the line and become the solution. You ready for this? Cat, you about to love this. Do you know what the name Amos means? Burden bearer. I'm taking this on the road. I got the most bougie church in America. The man name means burden bearer. And the same way he never asked for his name, He never asked for his assignment. Do you know what the name Travis means? The name Travis stems from literally this. It was the man who would stand at a bridge and take people toes for them to cross over. 
in the same way I never asked to help people cross over I didn't ask for this Woo. tell somebody I didn't ask for this Amos means bearer it literally means burden bearer his assignment was to carry a heavy word and so God I'm landing a plane takes him from the south side Judah to the north side Israel first of all it takes a whole nother level of gangster to go to territory that ain't yours you a whole blood going to crip territory like you you just I mean you see walking you just I'm here they looking at him like Amazon like fam you ain't even from here you need to go back down to the south side but I came to preach some people who can't seem to find comfort on the south side no more. It's because God is trying to shift you, push you upstream, hear me, to be the answer to the burden that you feel. Your burden is your mantle. Would you say that with me? My burden is my mantle. So he walks up all with the wrong colors. He walks up and he delivers his word from God. You got to understand at the time, Israel is completely wilding out. They're going crazy. They got adultery going on. But the main problem is social injustice. They're breaking the covenant of the ethical and the moral laws that God put in place. And, and really what is happening is the rich and the affluent people are taking advantage of the poor. I need you to hear me. And God cares. God so fed up. This is the Bible. All of this is in Amos. The book is really not even so much about sin as it is about injustice. God is so fed up that he tells them in Amos 5, I don't want the church services no more. Read the Bible, Amos 5, 22. Look at it. He said, even though you be bringing me burnt offering and grain offerings, I don't want them. I'm not going to accept them. Though you bring me your choice, fellowship offering, you come here, hallelujah, I, I have no regard for them. I don't want them. He says, away with the noise of your songs. He said, I won't even listen to the music from your guitars. He said, but let justice roll on like a river. Righteousness like a never ending stream. For anyone who thinks God does not care about injustice, you're sadly mistaken. He cares about our social issues. He's a fair God. He's a righteous God. When our prisons are overcrowded, not by people who committed murder, but by drug abusers and by people who have mental issues, we have a problem and God cares. When our prisons are overcrowded with minorities, African Americans and Hispanics, and they're being placed and pushed away in a place of punishment, not of rehabilitation. God cares. It's called injustice, ladies and gentlemen. And when God stands up in you, it provokes you to take a stand for something. When God is in you, well, I'm talking about when he's really in you, you start burning. You start getting a burden for the things he cares about. You can't just ignore it. You can't ignore when you see discrimination. You can't ignore when you see something unfair. Here we go. You can't ignore when you hear gossip. You can't be okay with pornography but stand against sex trafficking. Like one doesn't fund the other one. Do your research. You, you can't ignore the pain and the despair of the homeless. I was, I was going through this and preparing for this message and I remember the story my mom told me. And so I called her so just to fact check. I said, Mom, didn't you tell me a story about you and a homeless man back in the 80s? I said, I remember part of it. Like, talk me through it again. She was like, we were in Columbia, South Carolina. I mean, she remember every detail. She heard my, my dad went to Benedict College. So the year was 1982. They had just gotten married, and she got pregnant with my older sister, Kim. And they were broke. I'm talking about broke, broke. And she said they have $5. And she said, she said, we're going to get some chicken legs, some cabbage, and some rice. I said, well, five dollars? <laughs> they need to bring Piggly Wiggly back. My God. Chicken leg costs 32 dollars. One chicken leg. <laughs> she said, yeah, the rice was about 89 cents. I mean, she remember all details. I said, either 
You making this up or you got a crazy memory. She remember exactly how much everything cost. She said, we walked in and we walked past a homeless man. And she said, we got in. She said, and I just couldn't rest. Something told me you can't ignore him. She said, I told your dad, God, I just can't let it go. We're supposed to go back in and help this man. My dad said, yo, this is all we got until tomorrow. Widow, giving her last. It's all we got until tomorrow. She said, he was like, all right. Nevertheless, not my will. No, he didn't say that. <laughs> he went back outside. And she walked up to the man. She said, I don't know why, but I just couldn't pass you by. Here's, our fi- here's $5. She told me this part without even knowing what I was preaching. She said, he actually never asked for it. (laughs) She said, he looked up at me and smiled, took out a wallet, opened it up, it was full of cash. She said, all I saw was 50s and 100s. He He didn't give me anything, but he gave me a word. He said, she said, he looked at me and said, Ma'am, I just wanted to know that you wouldn't pass me like everybody else. I just wanted to know that you saw me. He said, Ma'am, because your heart is right, you'll never want for anything else the rest of your life. Well, her son a millionaire. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Mama ain't wanting for nothing. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. The Bible says in Hebrew 13, we entertain angels unaware. When you start caring about what God cares about, he'll start making room for your dream. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Now here's the twist. He never asked for it. He never asked for it. He never asked for it. Do you have the spiritual awareness to be a blessing to those who never asked for it. Amos said, yo, I'm not a prophet. I'm not the son of a prophet. I like this. I like this because he's saying, he said, I'm not for what I'm doing. I didn't ask for this. And I was thinking, man, if he was the son of a prophet, he'd be very polished. He'll know etiquette. He'll know how to dress. He'll know what to say. He'll know what to do. Couldn't God just make his dad a prophet? And God said, no, that would have made, that would have messed it up. Because I didn't need man interfering with my development. This word is for everybody who keeps reminding God of what you didn't ask for. Follow me. I didn't ask to come from this family. I didn't ask to be mishandled as a child. I didn't ask to be abused. I didn't ask for this attraction. God says, sometimes I allow things that don't look like they're good to work together for your good and for your call. This is a word for those who have cars that didn't, they didn't ask for. God says, watch me use it. Watch me be God enough to use what the enemy meant for evil and turn it for your good I didn't ask for this last thing the Bible says in John 8 there's a story about a woman caught in adultery (laughs) that was an interesting story to me because they're about to stone the woman but the man's nowhere to be found it's called injustice they're about to stone the woman Jesus walks up you heard this story before he walks up he draws a line in the sand and he says yo he started writing we all know what he wrote but he writes something and he tell him, if anybody out here without sin, go ahead, you take the first shot. Bible says from the oldest to the youngest, they start dropping their stones, walking away until no one but Jesus remains. He looks at the woman in verse 10. And he says, where are your accusers? Where is Amaziah? He said, didn't one of them condemn you? She said, no, Lord. He said, neither do I. Go and sin no more. I'm going to tell you what always blew my mind about this story. She never asked for his help. 
She never asked for his forgiveness. Do you have the spiritual awareness, the spiritual maturity to give people grace that they never asked for? This is what makes the grace that we worship about so amazing. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hear the words that are coming out of my mouth. The same grace that you didn't ask for, for salvation, is the same grace that you don't ask for, for your assignment. It was given freely because God knows exactly what you need. I came to remind you that your whole story, this is gonna sound crazy what I'm about to say, has been orchestrated by an intentional God. I came to cancel the spirit of condemnation, the spirit of regret, the spirit of the accuser that makes you look back and say, man, I never asked for this, God says, I know. But I am God enough to use all things to work together. I wish you'd just lean on somebody and tell them, it's working for you. It's working for you. Hear me. God has been preparing you Woo. for a prepared place. I want to speak to everybody over the age of 50 and tell you, he's been working it for your good. Your story's not over. I want to speak to every, every young adult in this room and tell you, he's been working it for your good. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior. All the I would not allow the devil to get control of the pen of my narrative. You write my story. You hold it all together. God of my present. God of my future. You write my story. You hold it all together you are god of my praise you are god of my future. watch him do it you're right you hold it all one more time your god come on let's stand together you are you hold one more time. Your God, look at you. Your God, you write my story. You hold together. Listen, you never asked for this, but God asked for you. He called you. You didn't call yourself. You can't call yourself. God called you. I want you just to say that. God called me. Come on, lift up your head or your gate. God called me. Stick your chest out. God called me. Lift your hands up and shout it. God called. Who called you? Who called you? Who called you? And so you don't have to give any disclaimers and no defense. Because you didn't call yourself. That God who begun a good work is faithful to perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. Hands lifted. Lord Jesus, I thank you for these beautiful people. Woo. I cancel the voice of the accuser. Where is your accuser now? I cancel the spirit of Amaziah that wants to mock that wants to intimidate those who you call. I thank you that no weapon formed against our minds, our hearts, our emotions will prosper. Father, would you be a bouncer to our ears and anything that's not your truth will rebuke and reject in Jesus' name. I thank you for courage. Woo! Courage. Woo! Courage. I feel the Holy Ghost. Courage. Courage to stand up straight. Courage to be everything you've called us to be. Courage to do everything you've called us to do. Courage to be the head and not the tail. Deliver us from false humility. Deliver us from apologizing for your call. 
we embrace today your truth we embrace today the reality of your word and it'll stand forever yes Lord heaven and earth will pass away to stand forever so stand in us so we can stand up for your truth in Jesus name amen hey before anyone leaves I want to give you an opportunity I want to give you an opportunity very quickly if you're in this room you're far from this God but you felt him today can I tell you before any of us leave you didn't feel an emotion you felt a person his name is Jesus and perhaps he's standing up in your heart today hear me hear me this is very important what I'm about to say maybe he's trying to get your attention so that he can use you to get someone else's attention maybe he's giving you a burden because you're the answer and you're in this room and you've been uncomfortable on the south side and you've been pulled by him maybe pushed by others but pulled by him into your calling into your assignment you're far from him I want to give you an opportunity to receive him as your Lord and Savior first time or the first time in a long time we're all going to leave together here but this is your moment don't miss it thank you Jesus it's a simple matter he already did the work you just got to receive it one I believe you died on the cross for my sins two I need a savior three come into my heart lift that hand if that's you one two three I want to be saved or I want to rededicate my life I'm coming back I see you in the green I see you back here my lady come on I'm coming back I'm coming back I'm coming back I need a savior I'm giving my, I pledge allegiance to the cross to the kingdom of God I see you I'm so proud of you hey if there's a hand lifted around you put a hand on her shoulder let's pray together Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for my sins. And I believe you got up so I don't have to stay down. I receive you today as my Lord and my Savior. Because of you, because of your love, I'm changed. I'm different. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's celebrate that, God. Hey family, thank you for checking out this week's message. I pray something was said or done that can inspire you to live a transformed life in Jesus Christ. I believe that the future is waiting on you and you're about to move into it. So make sure you like and subscribe right now to the YouTube page so you can check out all the messages every week right here. Love you.